where we left off. Oh, incidentally, all of your papers are graded, papers. All of your exams are graded, and I'm in the process of uploading your papers to um, uh, Canvas. I ran into a glitch with uploading them yesterday, but your exams are graded, and most of you are going to be very happy with your grades. I'm very happy looking at the grades of most of you. So it's good to make the teacher happy and yourself happy at the same time. And it's all from studying. Uh, the final exam is up. The practice final exam is up. If you want to start looking at it, going through it. And there we go. OK, let's go to work. It's almost over. It's almost over. You just have to hold on for a little while. Me too. Okay, what color? How about black? We do these in steps. Okay, we want to find the zeros of f of x equals x to the fourth power minus 10 x to the third or cubed minus 64 x squared minus 86 x minus 33. Let me make sure I didn't skip something. x to the fourth minus 10 x to the third uh, minus 64 x squared minus 86 x minus 33. OK, and what we have to do is find the zeros. But as you can see, there's no way that you know that I know to factor it. There probably is some very esoteric way, but um, I don't know it. So step one, we find our P over Q. where P is going to be the factors of 33 at the end. All right, what is that going to be? 1 times 3 and 11. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, 1 times 33 and 11 times 3. Okay, so plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 11, and plus or minus 33. And then Q. Since um, the leading coefficient is one, Q is the factors of the leading coefficient. So Q is just going to be a very boring plus or minus one. And then remember, there is no guarantee that f of x has rational, rational zeros. OK, no guarantee at all. But if it does, if f of x does have rational zeros, then it's guaranteed that they will fall into the P over Q group of numbers, the set of all possible rational zeros. So that's what step one is, to find all possible rational zeros. So that will be what you get doing this the long way. What you get when you take all the factors of P and put them over all the factors of Q, which here is just going to be one. So you're going to have the plus or minus out here, 1 over 1, 1 over 3. No, uh, no, 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 no. Trying to make it more complicated. 1 over 1, 3 over 1, 11 over 1, 33 over 1. If there were more factors here, you would do that. 
but of course you know that one over one is one, three over one is three, 11 over one is 11, 33 over one is 33. So the set of all possible rational zeros of f of x, if they exist, are going to come from this group. Actually, let me do it the way they do it in my math lab when you're asked. Plus or minus one, plus or minus three, plus or minus 11, and plus or minus 33. Okay. So now step two is to graph f of x and look at it really closely. To find some of the zeros, that is the x-intercepts when they're real, some of the x-intercepts that match up with some of these numbers. We hope, we hope. Okay. So, x caret 4, come down, minus 10, x caret 3, and right arrow to come down, minus 64x squared. And all you have to do is, oh, oh, but you gotta hit the x, x squared, uh, minus 86x, minus 33. And then kind of go backwards and make sure you did it right. Yes. Okay, I'm going to graph this. All right. We need to look and see if that is one number or two. And then there's, there's, we need to look further. Since 33 or negative 33 could be zeros, I'm going to take a quick look right now from negative 33 to positive 33 on the x-axis. So I'll let X min be negative 33 and X max be positive 33. I'm not going to leave it there. I'm just looking. OK, there is something farther out here. OK, so now let's go back. to the regular window. And what I'm going to do is look further out here. I have to guess, okay? This stops at 10 right now. So we could be looking at 11 or at 33. I hope it's 11. So I'm going to go to 12 and just see. I'm going to let X max be 12. My bad luck. OK, all right, fine. I'm going to go out to 15. Even though that's not a possible rational zero, there might be an irrational zero. There you go. There it is, see? It's kind of hard to see way out there. OK, so here we've got one, two, three zeros, but this is a quartic. There have to be four. So I'm betting there are two here, but I can't go around assuming. 
So I'm going to have to take a closer look in here. Let's see, this looks like negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. I am going to change my window and go from negative five to zero. I just want to look on the left side of the Y axis. You don't always need to do this, but we need to really look closely and see what's going on. Okay, and then I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to get really close to the X axis, okay? So I'm gonna let Y min be negative one and Y max be positive one. There, look at that, there it is. Now this is the Y axis. This is negative one on the Y axis. This is positive one on the Y axis. And that's a really good thing to do when you wanna get really close to the Y axis to see what the action is there. I have just found out that I have one, two, three zeros over here to the left of the Y axis. Remember, it's important for me to be able to look and see. Okay, so I'm going to take a picture. This is to the left of the Y axis. And then we'll look at the right side of the Y axis. So I'll make this zero, the left side zero, and the right side, I'm gonna go out to 20, cause 15 wasn't really close enough to see that other zero. And I'm going to leave of, of the Y axis, just going from negative one up to positive one, so I can get a really close look. There it is, right there. put these on top of each other, see if that works. Doesn't have to be exact, but I just want a fairly good picture of what we're dealing with. Why do I care? Because I need to find numbers on the x-axis where the graph crosses that match up with hopefully some of these numbers. That's the whole reason for doing this. Okay, I'm gonna flatten. And I'm going to save, yes. All right, now we're ready to work, okay? Now that we've got a picture we can deal with. We're going from negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. That's, I don't know, about negative four and a half. So this is negative four. This is negative three. This is negative two. This is negative one. I don't know what that is. And look, that's between two of the hatch marks. That's between one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. It's between 14 and 15. I have no idea what it is. And this guy right here is between negative 1 and 0. So I don't know what it is either. So I'm going to put a question mark.
but I do have four real zeros. And it looks to me, now this is just a guess, It looks to me like negative one and negative three could be zeros of f of x. And those are rational numbers, so these could be. Here, oh, well, here's my guess, yeah. With the rational zeros, are negative three and negative one. I could be wrong on either of those. I hate it when I'm wrong. All right, step three, we're going to find out. We're going to use synthetic division for two purposes. One, to find out if negative three and negative one, or negative three or negative one are zeros of the function. And then uh, also to bring f of x, this guy, to bring f of x down to the quadratic level. Remember, every time you do synthetic division, you drop a degree. So I want to come down from the fourth to the third to the second degree, that is to a quadratic equation so that I can find the zeros. Well, to a quadratic function that I make into a, an equation, as you'll see. So let's do this thing. I'm looking up here, so I'm starting down here, then I'll scroll up, but I need to see what these coefficients are. Um, I'm going to start with negative 3 as my guess. So 1, negative 10, negative 64, negative 86, negative 33. Is that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, if we get a zero remainder, then negative three is a rational zero of f of x. That means I have to get a zero here as my answer. So, first thing I do is I bring the one down. I multiply one times negative three. That's negative three. Negative 10 plus negative three is negative 13. Negative 13 times negative three is positive 39. Oop. Okay. Negative 64 plus 39, enter, is negative 25. Negative 25 times negative 3 is positive 75. That will be negative 11. Negative 11 times negative 3 is positive 33. Negative 33 plus positive 33 is zero. Yay! And I have just dropped down a level to a cubic. This was one X to the fourth. Now this is one X to the third. I'm going to erase it erase the x to the third for now. Now I'm going to see if negative one is a zero of f of x. 
And if negative one is a zero of f of x, then it's going to, going to be a zero of this quotient. So here is all I have to do. Take my negative one and put it in a backwards L there. And then do synthetic division here. And now this is the last number. So this is where I need to get a zero, a zero remainder if negative one is a zero of f of x. This is a, a step I think you did not see last week. So it was important to show you. Bring down your one. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 13 plus negative 1 is negative 14. Negative 14 times negative 1 is positive 14. Negative 25 plus positive 14 is negative 11. Negative 11 times negative 1 is positive 11, and negative 11 plus 11 is zero. Yay! Okay, after we did our first synthetic division, that dropped this as the coefficient of x to the third, and now we've done synthetic division again, which has dropped this to x squared which means our quotient now is a quadratic, x squared minus 14x minus 11. I'm going to set this quadratic equal to zero in order to find the zeros of this. We can always solve a quadratic equation. Okay, there are no factors of 11 that add up to negative 14. So, I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. There's an invisible one in front of x squared. So, a is one, b is negative 14, c is negative 11, and x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a equals negative b is negative it's negative 14 plus or minus the square root of negative 14 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 11 all over 2a which is 2 times 1. Okay and what's this going to equal? This is going to be x equals positive 14 plus or minus. I go over here. Parentheses negative 14, parentheses closed squared, minus four times one times negative 11. and I get 240. The square root of 240 over two. Now, we've got, remember, you always have to reduce your radicals when necessary. So what I'm going to do is break down 240. 240, the easiest way to factor this is 24 times 10, although you can start from 2 and work from there. I'm 
I know that 24 is four times six, and four is a perfect square, and 10 is two times five. Ah, and I'm gonna break down six into two times three. So, 240 equals two times two. Let's mark those out. Times three times four times five. And I'm going to come over here and make sure that's true. Two times two times three times four times five. Yes, okay. Okay, so let's see. Two times two is four, that's a perfect square. Times three times four times five. Four times four is 16, that's a perfect square. So times three, that's not a negative, that's a times. Times three times five, Okay, that'll give me 15. So 240 equals 16 times 15. Fourteen plus or minus the square root of 240. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. 16 times 15. over two. Good. I don't have to squish stuff together. Let's move down here. So X is going to equal 14 plus or minus the square root of 16 times the square root of 15 all over two. So X equals 14 plus or minus four times the square root of 15 over two. Now we're able to find a GCF. Now we have to reduce this entire fraction. 2 will go into 14 and 2 will go into 4. So I can pull 2 out as a greatest common factor. That will leave me 7 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 15 over 2. See, so the 2's cancel. So x equals 7 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 15. So what? Here is so what? We now know what the rational zeros are. I believe they're negative 3 and negative 1. Yes. The what 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 they call the other zeros. The other zeros are seven minus two times the square root of fifteen over two and seven plus two times the square root of, ah, 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 the two is gone. The two is gone. It's like I have that hardwired into my brain.
There you go. Those are the zeros of the function, the rational zeros and the other zeros. Let me show you where they are. This is negative three. This is negative one. This is seven minus two times the square root of 15. Need to make that bigger so I have room to write it down. Seven minus this. Uh, No. Ha! Whoa! Okay. Never mind. Two times the square root of 15. Ugly two, but I don't dare erase it. And this. is seven plus two times the square root of 15. Okay, there's one more step, of course. Factor f of x into linear factors, bring that down. Factor f of x into linear factors. A linear factor has highest power one. We're going to use our factor factory. f of x equals a times x minus z1 times x minus z2 times x minus z3 times x minus z4. Okay, and I need more room here. All right, so um, it doesn't matter what I choose, but I'm gonna let this be z1, this be z2, this be z, three, and this be C, four. A is one in this, it's an invisible one, remember. So F of X, I mean, it really is. Let's go back to the beginning for a minute. F of X equals X to the fourth, blah, blah, blah. There's an invisible one in front of there. A is the leading coefficient. So it's a one, it really is one. So it's invisible. Now, X minus Z1 is negative three. X minus Z2 is negative one. Ah. X minus seven minus two times the square root of 15. And X minus seven plus the square, uh, two, two, two. No problem with erasing that one. Two times the square root of 15. All right, one more step, we clean it up. F of X equals X plus three, X plus one, distribute that minus sign, X minus seven plus two times the square root of 15, x minus seven minus two times the square root of 15. 
and we're done. So this, we had to go through all that to basically be able to do this. Don't you feel complete now? So the only thing different between this and what we did last week is this step right here, where instead of just making sure that that one number is really a zero, we had to make sure that two were. So you get the quotient of this synthetic division, and then you can go right into that without having to start over again, because you need to come down to your quadratic quotient. So you can set it equal to zero and solve for X. Discussion. Really? Okay, then uh, let's the, move. The, the square the root, root of 240, you then just have to, like, just break it all the way as far down as you can? Yes. That's the trick. And I started with 24 times 10, but you don't have to. You could have started with 2. 2 times 120, and then break down 120, and so on and so forth. 2 times 60, break that down. 2 times 30. It doesn't matter what method you use as long as it's correct. How did you get the initial up in step one, P equals? Where did those come from? Um, that's the way you do these. That's the way you find the zeros of higher order functions. You hope there are rational functions, and there's a high level theorem that says, if there are rational zeros, then they will come from this set of numbers right here, the P over Q numbers. So I did not invent it. The P, P's are the, the P, 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 not PP, P is the set of all the, let me move this so I can write more. I'll have more room. Of all the integer factors, of the constant. The constant at the right end of the polynomial. And Q is the set of all integer factors. of the leading coefficient, the very first number, which means you have to have your polynomial written correctly in descending form. Coefficient. There. Does that help? It just yes, is the way you. it is. In textbooks, you'll always find rational zeros. 
and then other zeros. But in real life, sometimes you never find any rational zeros. And that's when you have to go to IT and get them to find it. I actually took a whole class in writing algorithms for the computer uh, to find zeros of functions. Couldn't do it if you held a gun to my head today. But I made an A.